Hi, I'm Robert Weiss, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I fire crystalline glazes in a gas kiln. This is a Bailey kiln that was somewhat customized for me, and I'll talk a little bit about the oxygen meter in a minute. But first, we'll come up here and look at the control system. The control system is a computer control system, which you will see on most of your electric kilns today. This one is made specifically for a gas kiln. Uh, programmability up to 20 segments. In crystalline glazes, I use 17 of those segments in a gas kiln. You don't have to, but this is what I do. Uh, all the on-offs and so on, very simple. This is a high temperature shut off in case of an emergency. I have it set to shut off at 2400 degrees because I know I don't want to fire higher than that. This is a device that I just love. This device texts me all the temps that are going on in the kiln at all times. So I can have it set up to text me whenever I want. In my case, what I do is I just have it on my cell phone. I look at it and not only does it tell me upper and lower temperature, but it also tells me a graph of how we're firing. So I can overlay those graphs after the firing and say, well, gee, I got better crystals here. And what did I do here? And what was the temperature at that time? And I can just overlay them so that I can see where I went wrong or where I went right. So that brings me to the oxygen meter. Uh, the oxygen meter uh, was pretty much custom made for me by Jim Bailey. And what the oxygen meter does is it tells me how much unburned gases or oxidation I have going on in the kiln. So when you get reduction, that means that you have unburned gas in the kiln. I have zinc in my glazes. Zinc doesn't like reduction, especially when it's sintering at around 1525. It will explode. The zinc will explode. So it's pretty critical in a gas kiln to have a way of telling how you're doing inside. In this case, I know that if I'm 0.050, I'm pretty much a neutral flame. If I go below that, it's going to be oxidizing and I'm probably going to be blowing some extra gas out of the kiln. If I go above that, anywhere from, let's say, 0.100 on up, I'm really reducing. And this is not something you can tell by just opening your people and seeing what kind of pressure you have, because this actually tells me what the real reduction is, how much unburned gas I have inside the kiln. I think it's real important uh, if you're going to do crystalline glazes. I also use this for other firing, so <clears throat> not as important except if I'm doing copper reds. Let me explain how you can make one of these yourself. Pretty simple. Uh, you get an oxygen sensor online. They run anywhere from $45 to $80. Uh, you put it into your kiln. You're, you, there's a little discussion you can weld on and just screw it in, into your kiln. You're going to run two wires to an electrical meter. This is DC voltage. So the electrical meter has plus and minus. It's not hard to figure it out because if it's going backwards, you'll know. So you hook it up to the electrical meter. Now, you're not going to get what I get because everyone is different. What you're going to get is when you reduce severely, you're going to get a number on here. Maybe it's going to be 700. I don't know. Then when you're oxidizing, you're going to get another number on here, and that could be a 100. What you're going to need to do initially is fire your kiln and find out where oxidation, neutral, and reduction is. And you'll find that when you start reducing in heavy reduction, that meter is going to go up because it's saying, wow, there's a lot of unburned gases here. In a neutral flame, it's going to go somewhere in between. And then an oxidizing flame, which usually you're pretty much wasting gas. So this will help you from wasting gas. It'll be lower. That can be put on your kiln, zip tied to your kiln, laid on the floor, however you want to do it. But that will help you in being able to know when you're oxidizing, reducing, or having a neutral flame. Uh, 
I want to compare and contrast electric kilns and gas kilns. I've been firing in my Bailey kiln doing crystalline glazes for a long time. Been very successful in that. If it weren't for this oxygen meter, I'd be in trouble. I wouldn't be able to do it. In an electric kiln, you don't need an oxygen meter. You're going to fire, my glazes are going to go up to cone nine, and you're going to get great results. I don't have to do some of the things that I do in this kiln that I do in an electric kiln. Electric kiln is, you know, I turn it on, I watch it. I always watch until cone nine is just where I want it. And uh, that's when I go ahead and put it onto the automatic system where I'm going down, holding, going up and down, up and down. In the uh, gas kiln, there's more to do, but the results can be endless. Uh, in a gas kiln, you can do a reduction firing for your regular pieces. So if you wanted to go that route, you can put an oxygen meter on. When you're reducing, if you're doing copper reds, the oxygen meter is so helpful to let you know where you want to reduce, how long you want to reduce. And at the end, for me, copper reds are an oxidation at, at somewhere between eight and nine. So I want to talk a little bit about difference between a gas crystalline firing and an electric crystalline firing. Uh, one of the things you have in gas is control over your damper. So when I fire to cone nine, nine is bent just perfectly. I open my damper. I want to drop the temperature fairly rapidly down to my hold temperature, my first hold temperature. And at that point, I can close the damper and get it set up. That usually takes me about 12 to 14 minutes. On an electric kiln, I have kiln vents on the electric kiln. The kiln vent actually I automatically turns on because I have a controller that'll turn on the vent. And if I turn the kiln vent on, it takes me about 50 minutes to drop from cone nine down to my hold temperature. There is a differential in what happens in the kiln. So just imagine at cone nine, that glaze is flowing down, flowing off the pot. Okay. If I, if I get it in, let's say 14 minutes, it has flown down to about here. If it takes 50 minutes, then it's flowing, 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 flowing. And sometimes your crystals are going to form more on the bottom. Now there's a way of dealing with that, which I can talk about later, but that is one of the differences between having a gas kiln with a damper that'll open up and an electric kiln. One of the things you can do on your electric kiln, if you have a vent on it, a, a suction vent, you can open up those holes and you can suck out more. You just have to be careful because you don't want to burn up your fan that's sucking it out. Well, thanks for watching my video. I want to mention that I get emails from time to time from potters that are firing in electric kilns and are concerned about going to cone nine or cone 10. My glazes fire at cone nine. And I got to say that I have had no issues with mine. I've fired my kilns for many, many years. And while you have to replace elements periodically, you have to do it if you're firing at cone six or seven anyway. I suggest you use your kiln to the fullest potential. If you have results that you want to share, please send them to me so we can share them with our community. And again, I appreciate you watching the video.